62. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy three uh, T2 micro machines guys because I need them in order to deploy Ansible controller as well as uh, uh, two clients actually. Yeah, so let's let me go to launch instances here. I'm going to put everything in public subnet one and I'm going to deploy three machines guys Three machines, so I'm going to give the name next storage add tags Name I'll say Ansible Ansible node hyphen I'm going to give it like this so I'll say configure security group So let it deploy guys. Uh, let's take a five minute break. I'll come back in five minutes and then we'll continue from here. Okay, so please hold on So I want to share this coming from my mail desktop. I'm going to copy and share from Inside actually hold on Okay, good. So let's meet in five minutes, guys. Hold on.
okay guys let's proceed <clears throat> so as you see i have deployed a totally four machines are there let's do one thing uh, i should have deleted this one as well but i'll do one thing first one right i'm going to make it as a controller yeah let's make it as a controller hyphen one and second one i'm going to make it as a node one and third one i'm going to make it as a node two and uh, this server i'm going to make it as node 3 okay wanted i'm making it instead of uh, because this is a different operating system okay so uh, the thing is i'm going to log into so i'm going to log into uh, each server uh, for first server i need to configure the ansible so i'm going to log into here okay sorry it's ubuntu guys sorry it's ubuntu right so i'm going to log into ubuntu okay right so here right uh first uh let me tell you and how exactly ansible is different from others is now we have the configuration systems uh Okay, Terraform is there. Terraform, what it will do, it will it will deploy the infrastructure, folks. But it is not for management. For example, uh, if you want to deploy the whole infrastructure using uh, VPC subnets as well as EC2 instances, everything, right? You can use the Terraform, and it works. It, it works very charmingly, and it will deploy it. Now, after deployment, once the deployment is done, after uh, after 15 days, if you want to install some some sort of application or Nginx or some sort of a Tomcat, everything, right? That is not responsible of terraform terraform is only for infrastructure orchestration right so what you are talking like installation of tomcat updating patching everything it is not the responsibility of terraform it should be responsibility of a configuration management and desired state actually what is this configuration and desired state see configuration and desired state means see uh, installing installing and configuring applications is configuration manage config management okay now what is desired state see what will happen imagine some uh, somebody has uninstalled that application who will take care of that one or there is a user uh, which should be always present but somebody has accidentally deleted the user so what desired state will do is if some change was being done what it will do is it will revert the change so that is desired state because in desired state we'll say that one my system should have these packages these applications and these users and these files so when you define that in a configuration even somebody try to drift away from that one by deleting a user or deleting an application right what uh, what the the tools like ansible puppet or chef will do is it will reinstall recreate re all the files and everything okay sometimes data might be lost but again so what will happen is if you have a file file name as test file and you have some data that file is deleted the desired state what it will do is it will create recreate that file of course you can't get the data back but it will create that file so that is di uh, desired state now there are different tools you do for this one uh, the first one i'll say that ansible which is a free tool you have puppet you have uh, chef you have salt you have a dsc from desired state configuration for windows machines basically now i'm familiar with ansible puppet and uh, dsc but in this session i mean in the in this devops course we're going to discuss all about ansible and puppet see ansible is free it was being bought by bought by red hat and red hat is bought by ibm that's different so ansible is there ansible the beauty of ansible it is it's a agentless agentless tool works on ssh protocol that means if the server simply have the ssh it will works very well that's why what we'll do is ansible can be used even for performing the network configurations as well so puppet is agent based agent based uh, tool which is suitable for enterprises okay sorry 
so enterprise so what will happen is if you have like uh, if you have like a big company right you need to manage like thousands of uh, servers right then what you can do is you can use puppet you can also use ansible what will happen is ansible is free and when you are managing hundreds of machines it's fine but if the server is still going towards thousands right then ansible might not be a good tool because it will slow down because it's a it's not agentless it's need to talk to all servers and uh, take action puppet is also having agentless talk uh, which is called as actually called as bolt but i'm i'm yet to test that one Okay, the reason I chose Ansible is Ansible not only configuration, but it also can be used to perform the day-to-day -day activities like rebooting of servers, creating of users, or, or checking the free state. Like ad hoc requests can be performed with Ansible. So we're going to discuss about these two. Let's deploy. Uh, and moreover, agent uh, Ansible, right? Uh, it's it pushes the configuration. That means what we're going to do is from the Ansible controller, we're going to push the configuration saying that one install that package, install this uh, uh, software, create that user, all these things, create that file. Whereas, so okay, uh, Puppet, right? It's a pull architecture. It's a pull or the agent pulls the configuration. Agent, Puppet agent will pull the config. From the puppet master so this is a pull architecture whereas ansible is a push architecture okay do there is something called ansible which is also push or pull architecture called m collective but i didn't i didn't work on it guys okay let's do one thing let's deploy it actually okay so right now if you see i already logged into the i already logged it so what i'll do is once i run an app update Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to docs.ansible.com. Let me close this lot of files are there. So I hope you guys know that I started today morning seven o'clock. Uh, there is Azure batch, right? So if somebody don't know, yes, I started an English batch for us today morning at seven o'clock, a weekend batch. Okay. <clears throat> now, what I say is here, uh, docs.ansible.com. Here I'll go to the installation here. So you have up to update and uh, we're going to run this and uh, the dependency is something like you need to have python guys but when you install ansible it will install the python so it's already there so software properties so i'm going to add the repository and install the ansible But before doing Ansible, right, I need to do something called I need to set up a passwordless authentication, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run SSH hyphen keygen. Now what I'm going to do is right now, let me show you an example what I'm trying to say. Imagine if I'm going to root at the rate, uh, if, I, if I type SSH, SSH hyphen I dot SSH uh, IDRSH. 